Hiya class, today I thought I'd um, keep going with our geology study by talking about some mechanical layers of the earth, specifically the lithosphere and the asthenosphere. This will be very, very important for the theory of plate tectonics, which makes up the bulk of this module. So, let's get into it. This is a diagram that summarizes the layers of the earth. On the left side we have compositional layers, so these are defined based on what they're made up of. We have the crust, the mantle, and the core. On the right side of the diagram are some terms you might not have seen before. We have the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, mesosphere, the outer core, and the inner core. These are mechanical layers, so rather than what they're made up of, they're defined in terms of mechanical properties. And these properties are things like the strength of the materials uh, the temperature, the density, especially. Um, the mesosphere is not particularly important for what we're studying, and you should already know some things about the outer and the inner core. For instance, the outer core is liquid, the inner core is solid, and they have the same metallic composition. So today we're going to focus on the lithosphere and the asthenosphere, and on this diagram you can see the thicknesses of each layer, so I won't go through all that data, I'm trying to keep numbers to a minimum in this video. So, what is the lithosphere, first of all? Well, the lithosphere combines the crust and the uppermost section of the Earth's mantle. So, the crust, as you may already know, is composed of basaltic and granitic rocks, and a whole range of other rock types, but basalt and granite are the most common ones, and you can see some examples on the screen here. Underneath the crust is the top section, which we call the lithospheric mantle. And this is made of rocks called peridotite. So, peridotite is a sort of greenish rock that contains minerals like olivine, spinel, uh, garnets, especially, and uh, pyroxenes. Combined, these layers form the lithosphere, and it has some interesting mechanical properties. The lithosphere is very strong, it's made of very cool, rigid rocks. And the lithosphere, of course, supports all life on Earth because it's the outer layer of the earth. So that's the crust that we live on. Underneath that we have the asthenosphere which is the sort of middle section of the mantle. The asthenosphere is also made up of peridotites and they are reasonably solid. I'd say at any given time 99% of the asthenosphere is solid rock. The other 1% is molten. It's in a magma state. The asthenosphere is really really hot. Um, and that heat, that temperature, makes it mechanically weak compared to the lithosphere. So, whereas the lithosphere is very rigid and very hard to deform, the asthenosphere is fairly easy to deform. And in fact, under pressure, it can actually flow over time, despite being solid. It sort of works like toffee. If you squash toffee, you can change its shape and deform it, and that's called plastic deformation. The same thing happens to rocks in the asthenosphere, but much, much more slowly. Um, the lithosphere and asthenosphere are defined by a temperature boundary, so temperature is one of those mechanical properties I talked about before. And the temperature is usually taken as 1300 degrees Celsius, so the top of the asthenosphere is 1300 degrees. Basaltic lava, which is the hottest type of lava on Earth, this is what erupts in the volcanoes of Hawaii, this stuff is 1200 degrees Celsius, so the asthenosphere is hotter than lava. Yikes! As I said, this is really important information for the theory of plate tectonics, which you'll cover a bit later on in the course. Plate tectonics explains pretty much everything that goes on geologically on the Earth's surface and under it. It explains how we get amazing volcanic formations like this one. This is the famous Giant's Causeway in Ireland. It's made up of basalt. Plate tectonics explains how volcanoes and earthquakes form, how mountains are built, the shapes of the continents, and so much more. So I hope you find that interesting. I will probably put some more videos up on it soon. And thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you find this helpful for your study in geology.